Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and I am back sewing with you today. Last Wednesday we had a crazy surprise snow day and my kids were home and running all over and so I just decided to not do a live show. But today I'm starting a super fun two-part project with you. So I'm going to be showing you how I created step-by-step -step the free sweatshirt dress pattern that I shared maybe two weeks ago. Um, so comfy and cozy and I have amazing sweatshirt fleece that I'm going to be using today and I will walk you through cutting it out because actually some of the pieces we are um, hacking a little bit from the pattern because we're, we're using a pattern that's not entirely intended uh, for this dress, but I love being able to reuse PDF patterns over and over to create so many different looks. So that's just a, just a bonus of um, PDF patterns. They are so versatile and some of the basic blocks can be used for so many different things. So I see some of you are rolling in. Hi, I'm so glad to see you. And um, today we're going to cut out the pattern and get started sewing a little bit. And then next week we will finish it up and I will be so thrilled to have this new sweatshirt dress for the rest of February and March as it's still chilly. So um, anyway, I've put the link to this dress in the description of this video so you can go ahead and check it out. And I'm also, um, let's see, for a minute, I will add it on here so you can see, um, you can go to lifesosavory.com and search free sweatshirt dress and that should pop up. The actual URL is free sweatshirt dress pattern um, and so you can find it there. So anyway, that should be all good for you to see. Again, it's also both in YouTube and in Facebook in the description of this video. So you can check it out there if you want to see the final product because today we will not be finishing it. And then, of course, I will link these two videos together so you have a complete um, sewing tutorial start to finish of this pattern. Okay, so we are going to get started. I'm super excited. I'll leave that up for just a couple of minutes so you guys can check out the pattern while I get started and while I start talking about some of the details here. Let's see. Is that cutting off my head a little too much? I'm also, of course, trying to have it so that you can see what I'm cutting out on the cutting table. Let's see if I can scoot this back here a little bit. All right, so that should give a workspace when I start cutting, I will go ahead and remove that ticker because I know it is covering some of the things across the bottom of the screen. So the only thing that you need to create this cute dress is the women's loose dress pattern, which is a similar silhouette, but we are just adjusting it a little bit. So in the fall, I shared a really cute loose dress made out of gauze, which is a delightful fabric to sew with if you have it. It would also be an adorable like linen dress or anything like that. It's just loose fit, um, dolman sleeves, really basic, so cute. So this is the women's um, top that goes with that dress and then you just cut a gathered skirt, okay? So for today, because we're adding these gathered, more puffy sleeves, and I don't want them to start way down here on my bicep, like where this sleeve would fall. So we are going to fold over just about one inch into the curve of the arm on this dolman sleeve. So you have just a little bit of the curve still there. And then we're going to draft a sleeve to go with it. Now, all of this is written out in a detailed picture tutorial in the online blog post about this. So if you're like, what is she doing? Or I can't see up close. It is all written. So just click through, check out the actual blog post on this. And that's where you can also get the link to download this pattern piece. And then I want this dress, the skirt, the gathered skirt to start just under my bust, really high waist. So I've also gone ahead and folded up about an inch and a half of the bottom of this pattern. And actually when I was making the woven gauze dress as well, I did shorten the top a little bit 
Um, it just felt like it was falling in a little bit of a odd place on me. Um, but that's why I always suggest like try on the top after you finish it before you attach the skirt to make sure that it's like where you want it to be. Okay. So then if you want to add pockets, this pattern, um, comes with, I think it's in, in the pattern. I reuse this pocket template template on multiple patterns that I think I did like stick it in this pattern. So it's easy to print out. So if you want to put pockets, which we are totally going to do, then you can go ahead and grab this piece um, as well. Okay. So I have my two pattern pieces. We're going to create the whole dress from these two pieces. It's going to be easy. And today I'm going to show you how to cut out the pattern pieces and then um, we hopefully will get started sewing a little bit um, as well. So um, the look that I shared in the blog post, I said the dress that I was modeling, I said I loved it, but I already had in mind a few tweaks and I went ahead and detailed those. One, the arms were just a little too short and so it kind of felt like it was, I mean, I don't mind my wrist showing and I often pull up the things that I'm wearing, um, but I, I kind of wanted it more full here and it was, it was kind of tight. So longer sleeves, we are going to do our best to create longer sleeves. And then the second thing, the major thing was that I only used one width of fabric. So that's 60 inches. I gathered it up and it was the skirt and it just needed to be a little bit more full, not a lot, but a little bit more full. So we're going to use probably like one and a half times the width of fabric. I bought more fabric, so I make sure I have enough. So hopefully it will um, be better and we'll create a great dress. So I went ahead and ordered from Raspberry Creek Fabric, which is where the original gray sweatshirt fleece was from as well. This beautiful gray navy sweatshirt fleece um, that has little flowers on it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be using. And then, um, so this is from Raspberry Creek, and I think I went ahead and bought three yards, which I think will be plenty, but I wanted to make sure I had enough for a full skirt. So, um, and then I love their sweatshirt fleece because it's just a little bit stretchy, which is perfect for this pattern, especially for the top, okay? So they didn't have the plain gray in stock anymore, but I was really excited when I found this pattern as well, and I'll show you um, more up close as we're sewing it. Then I've been on the look for rib knit, like a really strong rib to use for sweatshirts, for cup necklines and um, cuffs. And so I decided to order this, <coughs> excuse me. I ordered this one off Amazon and I can um, give the link to this um, if you want some time um, or when this is over. But I ordered three different colors, like a gray, a couple, maybe two grays, and this blue, this blue specifically to go with this fabric, and the gray to go with a lot of the other things I'm sewing. So we're gonna try to see this rib, if it has a good enough recovery for the neckline and other things. So that's what we're gonna be cutting out, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so let me move, remove the ticker, the banner in the bottom here, so that we can see even more of my workspace, all right? And we're just gonna cut one piece at a time here and hopefully create a beautiful top. I'm missing, where are my other magnets? Huh. All right, well, <laughs> well hopefully four magnets is enough. All right, so I'm gonna start by cutting out two of the tops because once I have the top pieces cut out, then I can go ahead and create the sleeves and then we'll see what fabric we have left and create the um, uh, skirt. Okay, so I pre-washed this fabric. I also pre-washed the ribbing and it frayed like crazy. So I've gotta come up with a better I would not, it was just wrapped up in everything and that that's not great. Plus I feel like it wasted, you know, like half inch of my 
um, of my rimming. So I got to come up with a better plan. I'm pulling off <laughs> all the strings from the ribbing. All right, so the top, we're gonna cut a front neckline and a back neckline. I've already cut off the higher back neckline last time I used this pattern piece, so we'll just draw one in there and cut one higher back and one lower back to create this. And let me go back over here to the comments so I can make sure. Okay, Debbie said I'm cutting in and out. So hopefully, that gets resolved. It looks fine on my end and I don't see any notices, but I don't know. Um, let me know if you're having any trouble seeing this. I know, Mary, yes, I have thought about that as well with um, surging those edges to seal them. And it wouldn't take much because it's not a very, you know, not a very big piece of fabric here. So I might have to do that um, next time. All right, so using my rotary cutter, I'm gonna cut the high neckline, the higher back neckline first. So I just make it maybe an inch and a half above the other neckline. And then I remember I folded over those sleeves and I have folded up the bottom a little bit. If you've never sewed this, I would suggest cutting the length as is and then once you get the top done, try it on and see where do you want your skirt to start? Like how, how is the fit looking on, um, on you? Because some of you, you know, your tall waisted, long waist, it just, it is different. So that little inch of fabric is not gonna make a really big difference when we're cutting it. So I'd go ahead and leave it. Now the sleeves you're gonna wanna shorten because on anybody, you're not gonna want um, puff sleeves well, I guess unless you're a pirate, uh, puff sleeves starting on your bicep, we want them starting more up on our shoulder. So um, at least that's my preference. Who am I to say what you want? Okay, so you're cutting that on the fold and then we're gonna do the same thing again. This sweatshirt fleece is 60 wide, so you can go ahead and probably get the um, front and back cut in one width of fabric. And because the sleeve takes a little bit more, usually I cut one this way, and then I cut one this way, and then that saves a little bit on the fabric. And we're cutting on the fold, and it doesn't matter if I have switched over. What? How is that dress still back up there? Hide it. I thought I took it off. <laughs> okay, rainy in Philly, Nancy. Uh oh. It's actually it snowed a little bit here this morning, but now the sun is kind of back out. So, you know, we've gotten quite a bit of snow this January, which is fun. Like I said, I was not on last Wednesday because. All of a sudden, I, I didn't even think it was predicted, but we had a crazy snowstorm, or maybe it was, but we had a day off of school, and I just, I wasn't anticipating that, so I didn't pre-plan, and the kids were running around, and um, I didn't do a live show. Okay, so we have the um, front and back cut. Remember, the back, the only difference is a little higher neckline. So now we're going to create sleeves using this as a guide, and also measuring for length. So like I said, the last one was a little bit short, so I'm gonna really try to um, make this do a good job measuring. All right, so you wanna measure on yourself or on a shirt that you have from the neckline, not from your neck, but from the neckline of your shirt down to your wrist, okay? So I'm gonna go 24, well, I guess I'm gonna add a cuff. I'm gonna go 23 and then we'll add um, a cuff and it probably won't be as wide as this one is, okay? So 23 inches and the reason I'm doing from there is because then when I'm measuring, I'm gonna measure from the neckline of this, the inside neck down and we'll create that sleeve piece which we'll add on to this. So this is about eight and I wanna to go to 23, so then that's how long we'll have to make our sleep. So 
we are going to cut the sleeve on a fold. So we had just a little bit of the width of fabric left there. So I'm gonna move down. The next one, we will be able to create both sleeves on the next width, and then I should have plenty left for my, um, my skirt, but we'll see. Okay. So we'll maybe do it facing this way. I have the fold here. So you wanna place the top shoulder lined up with the fold. Okay, so here's the top shoulder. Here's the fold of the sleeve. Now I am creating gathered sleeves. So I want the length of this to be wider than the length of my pattern. And here I really only have about two extra inches. So I wanna actually make, take a bigger fold, take a bigger fold so that um, I can gather more. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to change is on the original one, I gathered evenly around the shoulder and I didn't love it. Um, and as I, I looked more at my inspiration picture, I think it's really just gathered, the, the gathers are centered up on the top. So we're just gonna gather the top part of the shoulder and then put that sleeve in. Okay, so I've straightened up my edge. I'm gonna put this piece up against it. The fold is lined up with the top shoulder of the um, top. Now we're gonna measure the length. So I said 23 inches. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the neckline and then we're gonna measure down 23 inches and we're gonna mark it. Okay, um, I'm just gonna slide it over a half inch for seam allowance because we gotta sew these two pieces together. Okay, and then I'm going to remember make it like six inches to eight inches bigger than this part of the shoulder because we're gonna gather that up and that will be a cute shoulder detail. Okay, so now we have to create an angle from the um, underarm to the wrist, okay? So it's more like a, it'll be a wedged shape piece. And if you've looked at the tutorial, you've seen all this, okay? So wedge shape piece, so I went ahead and measured my wrist generously say um, could be like 11 inches so that and that the cuff will gather that in. If you're not putting a cuff on this, then you'll want to make sure your wrist measurement is a little bit tighter because you don't want a huge end of sleeve. That's not common. Um, but I like having the cuff sort of gather it all in place. Um, it got really bright, didn't it? Let me just adjust this real quick. The sun is coming out, which makes, makes my camera brighter. Okay, that's better. Um, okay, so 11 inches, which this is folded over and doubled. So let's say um, five and a half to six inches for our um, bottom of our cuff or bottom of the sleeve. So now I have what I need to cut this. So I'm first gonna create the wedge shape from the underarm, which is here, to that place I marked with the pin, which is the wrist. So that will be the underarm angled edge. Okay, and then you can see it's angled, okay? And then we're going to cut down here to create the wedge shape. So now we have created the sleeve shape and it looks crazy, but it's gonna be gathered and cute and hopefully not too short because seriously, I've done this like three times and every time I feel like I can't get it right, but it should be good. 
if I put these two together, it should, seems like it should be plenty, plenty long. It's still a bit of a drop shoulder. So now I should, so we'll gather this up and then put the cup on the bottom. Hopefully really cute. Hi, Birdie and Centennial. You're not too far away from me. It's a nice, pretty nice day here in Colorado. All right, so the next thing we need to do is cut a second sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold this over again. Remember, one part is on the, the, we have a fold on the top and then an angle on the bottom. So if you cut it the opposite direction, then it uses up some of that extra fabric. And I'll just use this piece as the guide for the second one. So cut out your two sleeves. All right, so now we have whoop, two wedged shaped sleeves that we're gonna gather and they would go, go all together. I know Mary, I'm gonna try this on before I cut and sew the cuffs this time because if I need to add a longer cuff, I will do a longer cuff. I'm not having a two, I keep thinking that, oh, the sleeves are plenty long. Now, one time, what I did, I know what happened the last time, is I had this unfolded when I measured. So that was like an extra inch and a half that then when I folded it and cut the top and sewed it, I lost that in the sleeve. So at least I could like identify a little bit of where I went wrong. Sometimes I'm like, what happened? Okay, so the next measurement we need to take is we're gonna cut the skirt. So if my um, top of the dress is going to start right in my high waist under bust, then I want to have it go down to um, above my knee, maybe like two inches above my knee. Cute little, you can make this long, but I'm going for more of a baby doll, not exactly baby doll, because I'm not gonna have it a mini skirt, but it's a shorter um, dress that I can wear with leggings or boots or whatever, okay? so. About here, one inch sort of under my bust, one inch above my high waist, sort of right in there. And then don't lean over to measure because when you do that, you lose all this length. So I, when I'm measuring myself and no one's around, I sort of slide my hand down before I lean over. So get it down on your leg. Back up a little bit. Now once it's down here, we can keep going and... Um, I think I'll cut it 24 inches because we have a little, we'll lose a little bit of length at the top and then I'll have it and it hopefully will be about 23 inches long. Okay, so a 24 inch long skirt. We're gonna create, we're gonna cut um, a couple of widths of fabric here of that. More strings from the cuff fabric. Um, I might cut the neckline, but I am going to just be patient and cut the cuffs when I get there um, because of making sure, I want to make sure I have enough fabric for my sleeves. Okay, so I'm trying to get this all lined up. We'll fold it over. I'm going to get it as straight as possible before we Cut that skirt. What feels up? I always think it's folded well. You know what the worst is to cut like this, which I know this isn't even probably the proper way to cut it, but um, I was making a, like flower girl dresses or whatever out of chiffon, and I, you know, the fabric is really wide, so I thought, well, I'll just double fold it over like this, and then the top was all totally wavy, not a good plan. All right, I'm gonna cut off the um, top of this fabric. It has a really wide um, selvage edge. You can see this is the custom printing that Raspberry Creek does, so they print it, it's got my name on it, and then they give this little fabric, so love their fabric. So 33, 
inches. No, 34. 24? Oh, I completely forgot. I think I think I said 24. Oh yeah, 24, not 34. Okay, so 24. So one or 10, 24. So if you're worried about the height, just go ahead and cut it um, taller than you think. You can always shorten it, but this looks cute on me. Okay, so that's going to go well, pair well with the top. And then I want to cut. Okay, so I have definitely three yards was the right call. And I think you could make most sizes from three yards. So do I go with the super gathered? Um, skirt and make it a front and back to complete width. I think I'll try that. If it feels like it is just too heavy and too poofy, we will adjust later. So 10, 20, four. All right, so two skirt panels, and then you can see I have just a little bit, not even a quarter of a yard like 10 inches left so and I have to order this by the half yard so definitely made the right call I think I had three yards I can go back and check um but that just gave me if I only had two yards then I could only do the one skirt panel not the two skirt panels okay so we're gonna cut a neck line and then we're gonna get sewing a little bit okay so we'll at least do maybe the sleeves gather and sew those on so you can kind of see how it's looking and then we'll do the skirt next time oh and i want to cut the pockets so it actually probably be about perfect to cut four pockets out of this extra fabric all right so the neckline um let's see we'll cut here this should be plenty And I'm going to cut my net one and three quarter inches tall. One and three quarter inches. And we'll see how I like this. Um, don't run off and order this until we see how this sews up because it is definitely thicker. Usually I just use like other cotton or something like that for the ribbing. This is definitely gonna look more like ribbing, sweatshirt ribbing, but is it too thick? Does it have good recovery? Not 100% sure yet. All right, we're gonna head over to the sewing area. I'm gonna take just to start the sleeves the front and the back and the neckline. We won't need the skirt till next week. And hopefully we can make some progress here on this top. All right, so I'm gonna try and turn my computer so I can see that and answer questions if you need. And then I'm going to whoop, turn my camera we're gonna start here on the sewing machine and I'm running a gathering stitch along the top of the sleeves. But what I wanna do first is, um, like I said, last time I gathered the whole length and then the gathers were evenly distributed and I think that looked kinda of funny. So. I'm going to mark here about halfway down the folded sleeve. And we're just going to gather between these pin marks and see if that is a better system. So I'm going to put it on a straight stitch. I'm going to put the straight stitch on the longest it goes, which is five millimeters. 
And then we're just gonna run a gathering stitch down the edge of this fabric between those two pins that we just put in there, okay? So I'm stitching maybe a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. Make sure you do not go off the fabric because then you will not be able to pull your gathers. You can either do one or two rows of gathering. I'm gonna keep it simple and just do one. And take out our pins, okay? And then let me pull this and see what it looks like here if we just are gathering. Before I do both sleeves, in case I hate it, gather up between those um, pin marks. And I guess I don't have the shoulder piece to compare it to, so I'm not exactly sure how wide I need to gather, but I think um, I did a top for rows recently and I did end up only gathering the top and I think that was better, or the top of the sleeve, I mean. So we're gonna go with this and see, I'm just tying off this one end has super short threads and I'm afraid it's gonna come undone. So we still have one side that we can adjust, but there would be the top of the sweatshirt sleeve and just have that top gathered. You could also do pleats if you wanted, um, but we'll be able to check really quickly once we start sewing the rest of the top. It's not, doesn't take long at all to get into um, where we can measure and see how wide we need to gather this. I do, can you see, you can see this fabric a little bit more up close here. Um, it's super cute. And what I love about it is it has like this fleecy soft back. So it's really cozy, but it's not heavy. It's actually a really light sweatshirt fleece. So it is one of my favorites and I've made pants out of it. My, the women's, um, jogger pattern I've made out of this fleece. It is definitely one I go back to over and over. I sew with it for my kids for myself. Really, really great. Okay, so we're just gonna gather this up a little bit, but like I said, we will adjust when we see how big we need to make this total um, length. All right, so now it's time to go to the serger. A lot of the rest of this project will be sewed on the serger. So we'll just bring it over here. Okay, so you can see, um, hopefully clearly here, what I'm sewing on. And we're gonna start by taking the front and back and sewing one of the shoulder seams. Now I'm just gonna sew one because then I'm gonna put the neck in and because I always like to sew the neck on that open um, line. Can you tell what color I was sewing with earlier today? Hmm, you'll have to come back on Friday on my blog and see what I was sewing out of blue linen. I'm super excited about the project though. And it turned out amazing. Okay, so we're sewing, oops, turn it on. That's always better if you turn your machine on. I'm sewing one of these shoulder seams. And then we will be able to adjust the sleeve that we just gathered, okay? Ugh, blue linen everywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness, you know what's also everywhere is this <laughs> blue from the um, ribbing. Okay, so here is an open shoulder seam and we want these to match. So you can see we need to gather it up a little bit more, which is good. I like a lot of tight gathers. Now, the only problem is, did I cut it too wide and even pulled all the way? Is it a little too big? If, it, if there's just a little bit extra of a point here, I'll just trim that off. You can see how it just like sticks out a tiny bit with the point. So I will, maybe, oops, sorry. Um, 
you know, see how this point just extends a little bit? We'll just trim that when we sew the underarm. So I'm going to pull these gathers as tight as I can and then tie them off on both sides. And I think that still will be maybe just a tiny bit too big, but close enough that we can make it work from there. So if you have the bigger the sleeve, obviously the more you have to gather, or you can see like on this one, I'm actually running out of space, but I think this is gonna be, oh, I just have like a quarter inch on either side. So how pretty is that top of that shoulder um, going to be there? So pretty is the answer. <laughs> All right, so this one I've already tied off the one side. So I'm gonna try to tighten up these gathers as much as I can and then tie it off the other side. And like I said, it's gathered as much as it can be. Okay. Fully gathered, and then there will be the sweatshirt sleeves, okay? But before we sew the sleeves on, I am going to add this neck band to the neck, which is this opening right here. Okay, and um, so you can do this a couple of different ways, and I know I've said this before, but you can measure this neck opening, and then you want, with this much um, stretch, you probably would want to cut this 80%. So, for example, if your neckline was 20 inches, 90% of that would be 2 inches off or 18 inches, 80% would be 4 inches off or 16 inches, and I would probably cut this somewhere between the 16 to 18 inch, and then you can stretch and sew it if you wanna have it all measured out. I usually just like to stretch as I go and um, really do it by feel on there. And once you've sewn, I think a lot of neck bands, then you kind of get the feel of it. But I might totally be wrecking this because this ribbing is thicker and not quite like other ribbings that I've used, but I'm going to stretch it quite a bit. I feel like sweatshirt necklines are usually pretty stretched out. So I'm, as I'm sewing this, stretching this quite a bit along here. And then I probably will top stitch the seam allowance because that helps this to lay really nicely when I pulled it so much, it might have a tendency to pucker. But if you go ahead and top stitch, I think that really helps as well. So we will see, this is a bit of an experiment. I obviously think this would make great sleeve cuffs because it's nice and thick and it does have pretty good stretch recovery. But I guess I'm not 100% sold on using something this thick for the neckline but I want it to match, so <laughs> we'll see. I bought two other colors, so I certainly hope I like it. <laughs> okay, it actually looks really nice. You can see that on there. I think that's gonna lay okay. And actually, I don't even think I would have to top stitch. That looks pretty good on there, okay? And I like the color with the blue, okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and sew, sew up the other shoulder then. So you wanna make sure that the tops of the ribbing match up as perfectly as you can. This is really fat. We might have to stitch this with the sewing machine if, if the serger doesn't like, doesn't catch all the layers. We'll see when we get done. if we need to reinforce that. Okay, so I'm sewing up the rest of the shoulder here. Um, didn't do a bad job sewing that neck. Okay, so I just need to finish that with my darning needle. Hi, Danielle. All right. So I think I showed you this more in detail last week, but I just slide this needle through the stitches, put the serger tail through it, and then go ahead and pull it out. And that really 
um, finishes off that neckline well. This was pretty thick, so it did get slightly off, but that's okay. And I think I probably will go through with the zigzag and just reinforce this um, before I'm finished with the product, but not right this second. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is grab the clips. We're gonna sew on the sleeves and then we will pause this project until um, next week. But we got the sleeves all gathered to perfection. So we're going to finish that. So open up your shoulder and then I'm gonna put the middle of the gather at the top. And I'm gonna add a few clips right to this gathering just because it is pretty tight and I wanna make sure these are laying nicely. And then you're going to just make sure that the sleeve extends all the way to the end, or in our case, a little bit past the shoulder. We'll even that up later. Not worried about this little bit of overlap that we have. And then we will hopefully just be able to surge right over those gathers. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other shoulder. So take all those gathers you have, make sure they're laying nice and flat and then put the center on that top shoulder seam, making sure everything is laying as flat as it can, even though it's very tightly gathered. Okay, and then put a couple more clips. Okay, and down the other side as well. Okay, so we will sew these two sleeves on, take a look at how cute it's coming together, and then we'll go ahead and um, break until next week. All right, so I'm gonna start sewing on one side of the shoulder. I do like sewing with the gathers on top and you might have a personal preference about that, but um, I like to be able to see the gathers. This pattern, as well as I think all of my pre-patterns come with an included 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going over those gathers. So I'm just trying to make sure they're all laying flat and not tucked under. You wanna see all the layers. Uh-oh, I just broke a needle. Poop, I just replaced that too today. Okay. Mm. I have one, not that I have to use a surgery needle, but one needle left. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this broken needle and then and cut this thread. Get this little piece of needle out of here. Thankfully, my scissors are magnetic, so it sticks to it. And then I'm going to sew off my project so that I can re-thread that needle. Okay, so it just, it is thick going through all those layers of fabric. I probably shouldn't have stopped. I feel like sometimes once you lose momentum, then I don't know, that's where things like a broken needle happen. That's the way I feel. I don't know if you guys feel the same. I feel like it was sewing just fine and then I stopped to talk about it and then it like couldn't handle it anymore. So I don't know. We'll just re-thread it here though and see what happens. My whole serger was being wonky this morning, so I had to re-thread the whole thing. Re-threading just one needle is very simple. All right, so I said I like to sew with the gather showing, but I am going to come at it from the other side now here, so I'm not starting right in the middle of those thick gathers. That seems like I can learn from my lessons. I just broke a needle. We're gonna start where the sewing is easy on the side here. And then hopefully we can build up some steam 
to do these gathers. So because I'm they're on the underside, I want to make sure they're all laid out right before I get in there. Going through, overlapping a little bit, and coming off the other side. Whew. All right, let's take a look at that sleeve. Oh my goodness, it's so cute with the gathers. Got to cut out. I love it. Look at that shoulder. Isn't that adorable? I think it's gonna oops, gonna be so cute. Okay, let's do the other one and see if we can make it all the way across the gathers without coming into a disaster. We're gonna get close. We're gonna readjust everything. Maybe I should take out all these clips so I don't have to stop and do them. We just want to go zippity do. Huh. Also, when you're going over the gathering stitch, you know that one we did, you want to make sure that you, I'm using the hand crank with my hand to help turn it a little bit, get build up that momentum again. Um, you want to make sure you're sewing over that gathering stitch so that it doesn't show on the right side of the project. If it does, you can always just pick it out, but that's an extra step that if I can avoid, I like to avoid. Okay, so another really pretty shoulder. Super excited about that. All right, so let me um, put this back and tilt it up a little bit. So I can, oops, look at all that fabric I threw on the floor. <laughs> I, I cut and throw. All right, so let's take a look just what we have so far. Looking really cute. So here is the top of the dress. You can see how it's still a drop shoulder, okay? Those gathers aren't right on my shoulder. Well, maybe I'll do this side. but that I'm glad I cut off that extra length of the sleeve, okay? Because it's still right here on the edge of my shoulder. And are the sleeves looking long enough? I think it is looking better. I'm just gonna put this over my top. Okay, ooh. Uh, I might have to cut out the neck. It's a little tight. Maybe it's because I use the tighter neckband. I don't know. It feels a little choky. Does it look choky? What do you think? I don't know. I'll try it on without a sweatshirt on. All right. So the sleeves aren't any too long. What in the world? I am going to definitely, um, so cute though. I love the gathered sleeve. Um, make a longer ribbing because I feel like if I just cut like an inch one, it won't be long enough. I don't understand. How can I measure? And then the measurements not add up. Huh? Okay, well, there we go. So, oh, that sleeve looks so cute though when it's down like that. Anyway, here's the start. We will finish it next week. We're going to add cuffs, sew up the side seam, add the skirt, add pockets into the skirt, and then hem it all up. So it's going to be super quick and easy to finish up. And I hope you enjoyed walking through the whole process from cutting it out, drafting a sleeve that almost isn't long enough. I guess I'm just going to have to add like a full inch to my measurements next time. Um, but I think it's looking really cute. I love this fabric. I love the ribbing, although I'm just not sure about this neck. I mean, it'd be easy to take out put in a new neck. So that is not a big deal at all. If we see a little bit bigger neck next time, you'll know that I decided this one was too choky. I couldn't handle it. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll finish the whole dress and then um, decide and see if I can handle it or not. But next week we'll finish this dress. 
and then you'll have a complete um, sewing tutorial for this project. So get started on it, download the pattern or order some sweatshirt fleece if you are interested in creating this. It is an adorable dress. I hope you've clicked through the link in the description of this video to see what the final product looks like and that you'll join me next week as we finish it up. So thanks for joining me. I will see you next time and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.